So what we want to learn to calculate here is four different types of yields. The first one, in fact five of them. The first one is holding period yield. The second one is effective annual yield, also called as effective annual rate. The third one is bond equivalent yield. The fourth one is money market yield. In fact, there's a fifth one, which is a bank discount yield. All these are the rate of return that you have earned on an investment. Now the problem with them is that they have different conventions. The convention is that some of them use compounding, some of them do not use compounding. Some of them use 365 days, some of them use 360 days. Some of them keep their base as investment value and some of them keep their base as face value of the investment. And therefore it can create a lot of confusion in trying to remember what is to be used where. So what we would do is we will take an example and we would use a simple memory technique which would be analogy of three mistakes. So if you remember three mistakes and the sequence you would be able easily able to remember formula of all five of them. Okay, So let's start with the example. Let us say we have a treasury bill with a maturity of 90 days, market value 930, face value 1000. In fact, let's make market value as 970. Okay, so what does it mean? It means if I go and buy an investment this tree bill at a price of 970 after 90 days I can go and collect 1000 back we want to know how much we have earned and there are five different yield calculations that we can do on this the first one is holding period yield which is the most basic holding period yield kind of ignores the time period it simply says how much did I invest 970 how much am I earning on that I'm earning my earnings is 30. So holding period yield simply 30 divided by 970. And how much would that be? No, it's slightly higher than 3. 3 point? Is it 3 point? 3 point? 0 0.09 percent. So holding period yield is 3.09 percent. Now 3.09% is what I am earning for a period of 90 days. So how much for one year? Now the question starts. Is one year 360 days or 365 days? Are we going to use compounding or not compounding? Are we going to keep denominator as 970 or 1000? That's how we have different yields. And these numbers are coming from conventions. So the first one is going to be effective annual yield. And in effective annual yield, we make no mistakes. Okay, so what are the three common mistakes that we would not be doing in this one? Number one, we will use compounding. Okay, the way it should be done, that 90 days return would be compounded roughly about four times in a year. Second, we would use 365 days in a year. And third, we will use 1000, sorry, 970 as the investment value. So how do we do effective annual compounding? 1 plus 3.09 percent raised to 365 divided by 90 and since we've added 1 minus 1 into 100. Let's try. 1 plus 1 plus 3.09 percent equal to that's 1.0309 y raised to x bracket open 365 divided by 90 bracket close equal to minus 1 into 100 13.13 13 percent so that's one way of getting effective annual yield let's say you don't like the formula you can still use time value of money row to get this number second clear TVM invest some hypothetical amount generally 100 serves better because we understand easily so 100 present value 
3.09 IY. We want to invest in one year. So how many 90 days period will come in 365 days? So more than slightly more than four. So 365 divided by 90 equal to is N. Compute future value. Answer would be 113.13. So that 100 rupees became 113.13. Therefore 13.13 percent. That was the first yield which is effective annual yield. The next yield that we calculate and just focus now I'll give you time to write later on. The next yield is bond equivalent yield and in bond equivalent yield we would be making one mistake. Okay, So which mistake are we going to make here? The first one that now we would have no compounding. Okay, So we would not use the compounding anymore. However, we will still use 365 days a year and we will still use 970 as the denominator. So how do we calculate? Now this is very simple. For 90 days, 3.09%. How much for 365 days? So 3.09% into 365 divided by 90. That is equal to 12.53%. So that was your bond equivalent yield. Are we clear? The third one is going to be money market yield. Now see in both the yields, money market and bond equivalent, we did not compound, we did not say raise to. We just multiplied that. So we haven't com factored in the compounding effect. In, the, in money market yield, we would be making two mistakes. So which two mistakes are we going to use here? The first one is no compounding. The second one, instead of 365 days, now we would be using 360 days. But of course, the third thing would remain intact that the investment value denominator we will keep as 970. So now for 90 days, we have 3.09%. How much for 360 days? So 3.09 into 360 by 90, which would be 12.36%. And now the last yield, which would be called bank discount yield. And in bank discount yield, we will make all the three mistakes. Again, one easier way to remember this is that bank makes the maximum mistakes. So what kind of mistakes are we going to make here? Number one, no compounding. Second, 360 days. And number three, we will keep denominator as face value. Okay, so we have earned 330 on 1000 now, which makes it as 3%. So for 90 days, 3%, how much for 360 days? So 3% into 90 by 360, that would give us 12%. So if you simply remember the analogy of three mistakes, you should be able to remember all the five wheels. So first one is HPY, where we simply say how much I earned divided by how much I invested, which was a basic yield. Then you said if I make no mistake and if I compound using 365 days, you got effective annual yield. Then you stopped compounding first mistake but 365 days, you got bond equivalent yield. Then you made two mistakes, money market yield, you used no compounding 360 days. And when you made all the three mistakes, you got bank discount yield. Are we okay here? So please write down now. 